Hi, it's Sterling Allen here. I just got at the uh, Keshi, Con Keshi Conference. It's September 21st, 2012. I'm way late. It's 45 minutes after the thing ended. My flight was really late. And anyway, I'm just going to go say hi to some people. Mm -hmm. Talking for about 45 minutes. Oh, only pictures, no photos? Okay. Okay. And uh, we're just milling around in the hall here. I've been having some nice chats. This is the reception area. And a uh, little lounge here. And book table. And then we've got, the, I guess, the conference room is in here. Um, uh, entryway. Hi. This is Constantine Mile is speaking today. Here's Constantine, and uh, he's going to give us a brief summary of how the conference went and what he talked about in his presentation. Well, I had the task to talk about uh, Nikola Tesla uh, and as well about the Kesha technology, but the problem was that I was not familiar with. Uh, the technology of uh, uh, Kesha who was inviting me so that I could only speak about Tesla. And um, uh, Nikola Tesla, this is my speciality because I have reproduced uh, the technology of Tesla um, more than 12 years ago. Uh, we, I could show the first time um, a reproduction of his historic um, ex experiment uh, producing scalar waves, electric scalar waves. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this system could be explained um, by um, oscillating uh, circuit, but this circuit has a special properties, and I pointed out these properties, and I could show as well uh, the um, rebuild we have produced, and Mr. Kesha has bought one of these uh, experimental kits, and uh, has bought as well the power kit. The power kit we have developed and constructed uh, for more power than uh, just to drive a boat in, in a pool or a, a small model of an airplane. So these are t basically toy level devices. Where can people get this kit? Yeah, uh, we have made it available on my homepage, uh, which is uh, www.mile.eu. M Y E L. M E Y L. And um, uh, there we have a description as well what uh, is uh, in the kit, and uh, we have a demonstration kit, which is the minimized version, only to show uh, the properties of scalar waves. Then we have um, uh, made available the experimental kit, where we have different uh, sort of coils and even a counter and so on, and the um, signal pro um, generator. Uh, so that you are able to reproduce uh, a lot of experiments which are, well, n showing new, new properties. Many properties are well known, are explained by standard technology, but the new things are in our interest. That means that I'm able to show uh, that these uh, scalar, waves, uh, scalar waves are quicker, uh, propagating than the speed of light, that they're not shieldable and and so on, that there is a reaction from the receiver back to the transmitter and so on. So a lot of things I could figure out and I could show with these experiments. And another um, uh, kit which is the biggest one is the power kit. It has about uh, 10 watt. The, the experiment kit had only has only uh, 50 milliwatt, so this is much more power. It's enough for for a boat or other other model to show the um, that the transportation of energy wirelessly is possible. And I showed this with a lamp, which was a glowing uh, fluorescent lamp, uh, which was glowing in the field. This was one um, wireless. Tr um, application and another one was that I could show that if I drive this power kit 
uh, and there is on the table, on the same table, uh, another uh, resonance system. It is getting the energy as well. So this was wirelessly, and this was uh, without earthing cable, um, which Tesla always was using, but it, it is always as well used as a critics of the Tesla technology that they try to uh, to say that this is not actually wireless if, if I need a cable, an earthing cable. Uh, so it is possible to, um, to drive the system without this earthing cable, but then it is not the Tesla original system anymore. You see, because Tesla has always used the earth, the earthing connection. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to replicate Tesla. I wanted to find out whether he was right or wrong. I wanted his experiment to be reproducible. And you've done that? Yeah, this is what we did. And uh, um, so uh, now it is reproducible and a lot of uh, uh, universities and companies as well, famous companies, are nowadays reproducing this uh, experiment and they see that uh, this is right. How many universities? Well, I don't know uh, actually because I don't do the selling. It's uh, my, my institute what is doing it. I, uh, I think it could be about uh, between 50 and 100 universities. Mm -hmm. Maybe even more. How many kits have you sold total? I don't know exactly, but this is more than 500. Mm -hmm. And how much are the kits? Well, um, the demonstration kit is 900 euro, and uh, the experimental kit is 1,400, and the power kit is 3,600 euro. Mm -hmm. What's your primary project right now that you're working on? Uh, I'm a bit propagating, this is why I'm here, you see, uh, this technology. And um, uh, when I was invited, for example, to, um, to Russia, uh, that was in August this mm -hmm. year, um, they wanted me to talk about the wireless transmission of energy. It was a colleague from Samsung who was um, uh, the uh, uh, chairman at this uh, conference, electromagnetic conference, it is called PEERS, Pro Progress in Electromagnetic Research. It's a very important uh, conference and uh, it is, was this time it was in, in uh, Moscow. Um, and they wanted me to give a presentation and when, when I was invited I said, okay, uh, I try to um, submit three papers and at the end all three papers had been accepted so that I had really <laughs> three presentations and I gave the same three presentations as well in America. One was about the um, theory, uh, the theory which is, uh, I call it self-consistent electrodynamics. This is the title of my, my book. I gave, I gave some, some hints today about uh, the content of this book mm -hmm. and um, uh, in, especially in, in Russia that was really a good audience to uh, discuss it, all specialists about the uh, theory, theory of electromagnetism uh, which had been there. Um, and as well in Albuquerque where I had been, mm -hmm. I gave this presentation at the uh, NPA, the National Philosophical Alliance, I think it is called. Right. And um, they invited me as well and I was talking about my theory. The second presentation was the wireless transmission of energy. Um, and I gave the same presentation at Albuquerque at the Tesla Tech conference, which was right. at the same time, at the same place, right. uh, but another conference. And um, you have been there, I think, so that you, yeah. have, you have seen my presentation over there. It was exactly the same. And part of these, uh, as well, I was talking about today. And, what's, this, and what's the third one, okay. I still have to add the third one. Um, the third presentation was about um, the DNA, uh, that means the biological uh, use of scalar waves uh, and I point out that these um, uh, 
uh, use in uh, our body, in our cells, is uh, a magnetic scale wave, which is used to read and to write the DNA for communication from cell to cell and even to to get the information out of out of the cell, which is really um, stored inside, and nobody knows how it gets out and, and how it is transporting energy and information, as these uh, DNA wave does. That's something I studied quite extensively when I was a graduate and undergraduate student. Mm -hmm. uh, what is known about the uh, transcription and reading of DNA. Um, on the energy front, um, you're involved in energy studies. Um, are you planning on taking a technology to market? Are you involved in that at all? Uh, well, uh, I as well discuss this with, with companies who are interested in this technology, such as the ABB in Switzerland um, and uh, Bombardier. I have contact with, uh, with this company producing um, underground railways. They are using nowadays uh, induction systems to support and transmit power uh, to, the, uh, to the trains. And uh, these systems have quite a good efficiency as long as the two parts of the transformer are very near one to the other. Mm -hmm. but if as the train is moving, then I have uh, spreading fields and then I have problems with efficiency and spreading fields means as well that we are influencing people standing at the side waiting for the train. If the train is getting in or coming or getting out, then they are influenced. And this is what we, uh, what we have to avoid we have to find solutions which are better. And I think the Tesla technology could be a better solution, especially the wireless transmission or in some applications as well, the one wire system. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we can resume without as, many as, just, uh, as much noise. Uh, we've got uh, people coming and going in the hall here. We've, we're in a side yeah. room here. Okay. Well, the uh, presentation about the DNA I gave at Orlando. There was a big conference uh, this year um, and uh, I was talking about the uh, communication of cells. And this as well is published in the Cell Biology, which is a very famous um, uh, journal. I, I was subscribed to that as a graduate student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very prestigious um, yeah. journal. In, in April this year it is uh, published. And uh, even in in other uh, journals as well, you you see these uh, papers. Uh, if you go on my internet um, presentation, my home uh, seat, there you see. Um, if you look under papers and their medical use, then you see uh, these papers. I have made it available for everybody. If you are interested in these papers, because otherwise you would have to pay for the or to buy the uh, the journal, the issue. From They're very the expensive. Very expensive they are. I know this, and uh, but I have I made it available now, mm -hmm. so that you can have a look uh, at these uh, papers which are published. Mm -hmm. And so you're basically serving as an advisor to various companies who are interested in implementing something on a practical level. Yes, uh, well, I do this for more than 20 years that mm -hmm. I'm working for industry, together with the industry, I get orders from industry and I'm developing. Um, at the beginning these uh, orders had been a standard technology and uh, there, are, there are a lot of examples uh, what I did in that long period for the industry, just like the double clutch uh, system cars are using today very often that had been a development which started in my institute and a lot of uh, um, practical applications uh, for robot robotics. Could I go into more of a maybe a philosophical political direction for a second and say 
what are your thoughts about um, the the world economic situation and what alternative energy, free energy, could do for that? Well, uh, we, we know that the um, energy industry in the, uh, in the whole world is very conservat conservative, so that they uh, um, earn money with the technology of today, and uh, that they, uh, well, they only uh, start to act if they have problems to survive. As long as, as the system of today is working, they see no necessity to, to change their technology. Um, and this is a problem, but I, couldn't, I can't say that the industry is against these new ideas. Um, they, uh, they are still watching what I'm doing. And um, they uh, discuss it with me and, and one with the other. And it's, uh, the, the problem is uh, that one of them has to be the first. And I don't know who is the first. If the first company uh, is using the wireless transmission of energy, uh, especially if, as an example, to drive an electric car, to recharge the batteries, or even to uh, to uh, send the energy to the cars so that the cars don't need any batteries or only batteries for for um, accelerating if they if they start the cars. You see, then they need a bit more energy but in the average it is less, so that we are able to reload the batteries, but we don't need batteries for, let me say, 500 miles or even more. Um, this could be a solution, but uh, the question is who is the first? If one is starting this technology, uh, then they all want it. This is normal. And, uh, at the time, there is really the discussion. I as well had the discussion, especially for the transmitter technology, because if we want to use this system for, for, for the whole world, uh, that means um, that I need a, a really big transmitter with megawatt uh, power, uh, so that uh, he will uh, have contracts with customers with drivers, with cars in Europe and uh, then in America and if they go to bed then the Japanese are using the, the energy and then in Russia again and uh, then in Europe and so on. So this shows that if you have a big power plant which is um, be used the, the whole day long and night long, so 24 hours a day, then um, uh, you are able to have a lot of customers so that in the average the power nearly is always the same. This is what we have to reach, that, mm -hmm. that we don't have to, uh, a lot of change in, in the needed power. Uh, it goes up and down. It, anyway, it goes up and down. Uh, we know this, uh, but, uh, but um, if we have a bigger amount of, of users, then it is... Uh, it is better for the uh, transmitter and for the producer. What about distributed power? Isn't that the direction we want to go so we don't have central grid anymore? Um, well, uh, the uh, fields, the field lines, always end up at the receiver. So if the car is moving, it is uh, moving the field lines uh, uh, automatically with, with this. With, with the uh, receiver, with the load, so that there is no influence. You don't have to direct your signal. It is directed by the receiver. If the receiver goes into resonance, then you have the direction, you see. So uh, the problem more is that you need a system uh, which is modulating um, the uh, the power so that only the, those guys who are paying for the energy get the energy. So you need a system, a pay system, how to pay and how to um, organize it that um, if there are several competitors that you uh, have a choice to use the uh, maybe the gas uh, from Siberia or the heat uh, from uh, 
from the ground in, in Iceland or or in uh, Canada or, or in Alaska uh, the, the energy from or, f or even from from the desert at the daytime they have enough power solar power so that we have a, no a lot of sources in our environment and the only problem is how to transport it and a wireless system uh, would be a, the absolute perfect uh, solution so you're saying wireless transmission could replace the transmission lines on the grid level? Yeah. Are we talking about a Wardenclyffe type, tower type of situation? Yeah, uh, the Wardenclyffe tower has had uh, 7.5 megawatt, so this was enough for driving a car. But I think about bigger things, bigger devices, more, more than maybe 50 or 100 megawatt. And that's how much power is being transmitted. So, so the receiver is that of that size. No, no, the transmitter is of that size, and mm -hmm. he is uh, um, supporting several receivers. Okay. That means several cars. Mm -hmm. Because you know the average of your car. If you start your car, you need maybe 100 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. But if you let if you uh, let it run, uh, you need only 10 yeah. kilowatt. Now they are going to be uploading the presentation that was made today to the web. Yeah. Um, in closing, do you want to um, make any uh, final statements or a synopsis of the, the event and what you're about? Well, uh, I'm talking about these uh, practical applications, not only here uh, in Brussels. Uh, I did the same presentation last uh, week in uh, Switzerland and uh, in America and in Russia and so on, so that uh, they all uh, know that um, this uh, technology could be developed um, if we find somebody who takes the first step. And this is what, what I hope, my hopes are that somebody says okay I want to put my money into this system and then we develop it next step would be um, power transmission system of about 10 kilowatt well this was the, just the power Tesla was uh, using in Colorado Springs 10 kilowatt and uh, this would would be enough to support one car only one car, just to demonstrating it for TV and so on, that everybody could see that this technology is possible. And then uh, we would take the next step. This step for 10 kilowatt is uh, between half and one million, one million uh, euro, about. Mm -hmm. That is uh, what, what is needed uh, for, for this step. And uh, then we have to uh, size it up for bigger powers and so on until we have the system and we have a lot of problems to solve like the individualization, individualization as Tesla was calling it it is I speak about the modulation that only the one who pays gets the energy so this is these are problems we have to solve and we have to develop the technology but we are engineers so that we we know if, if there is a problem uh, then we know how to, how to solve the problem. Okay, and so who is your primary audience in making this cell of, of trying to get this technology adopted? Who, who is the... the Which technology? The, the uh, wireless transmission yeah. technology. Well, um, I discussed this with the car industry. Mm -hmm. uh, with what, but the car industry, they are all competitors, you see. if. Mm -hmm. If I have one company, uh, then what, what, what is it with the competitor? He wants the same technology. So yeah. it is better to have a company which is supporting all these car industry, uh, car companies. And uh, I'm, I'm discussing this with, with such a company, with the biggest one in the world, uh, in this field. So this may be that we are um, doing the, this uh, step. Next, uh, I'm just waiting for for the money that I can start. So mm -hmm. it's and, and who would bring that money? An investor or the the? Um... It's not an investor. It is well. 
it is a company mm -hmm. which is uh, supporting um, and uh, constructing part of cars and, and mm -hmm. selling it to all the companies uh, in the whole world. And, okay. uh, so they're, they're very famous and uh, um, and but this is only one solution. I as well discussed it with ABB, for instance. I gave a presentation, and they are now using my experimental kit and playing with it. Mm -hmm. um, but they told me that if they have a customer like RWE in Germany, mm -hmm. which is a big uh, uh, energy company, mm -hmm. and if they get an order that they order this technology from ABB, a transmitter, mm -hmm. then they would um, construct the transmitter. They, they would do it. But without order, they say that well, then they have trans. Uh, then they have developed something and paid a lot of money, and nobody wants it. This is the risk is too big. Mm -hmm. Not the technical risk, but the commercial risk, which is involved with this. So they they want to be sure that the technology is used at the end, and then uh, I think the the way would be free to get the money to do it. There, there are special problems, you see, and um, but I'm, I'm sure they are the best to um, construct the transmitter, mm -hmm. the power, this is all Siemens perhaps, they, uh, such a company could do this, um, or in America, electric, uh, General Electric or so, these, they have the ability, they have the money, they have um, the um, experience to handle uh, these power. But there is still another problem which is the receiver and the construction of the receiver we want for the cars is even more difficult to get them into resonance, to uh, construct the pay system and so on. So the, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, things to consider to develop and th these um, receivers, uh, which have the size just enough for one car, 100 kilowatt, for instance, um, uh, to to construct these things, this could be done by small companies. And um, at this point, I would uh, I would uh, help. Uh, uh, with my experiment experience, mm -hmm. I, I would need to. What well, kind of if if we got some traction going and things started moving forward, um, as they said over at Storn, it a tanker has it takes a long time to turn a tanker, mm -hmm. a big company, and you're talking about um, technologies or the implementation that would take a while to implement. How long do you think it would be before we could see if things were actually starting today and we actually had this companies that were coming to the table, how long would it be before we could see these in our cars? Well, if, if we start today, you mm -hmm. see, if we start one year later, then we have lost one year anyway. Right. But if, if we say we would start today, then in uh, perhaps uh, two years, we could have um, bigger sizes, one 10, 10 kilowatt, for instance. This is enough to show that mm -hmm. this technology is um, possible for cars, uh, because today I have only these small models, but, but this is a, a toy, and for have, to have uh, 10 kilowatt, this would be enough for a bicycle or for a car or something like this. Um, and uh, then uh, we would have, we would need perhaps uh, three or four years to develop all the special problems. You see, in two years I think we could show the system, but we know that this uh, system has to be improved by a lot of special things, uh, modulation, how to to bring it into resonance, how to keep the resonance, how to follow the resonance. If if the distance is changing, then the resonance is changing as well, and we have to to follow this. You see, Th these are problems, real problems. We have to 
find a solution and, and I think we need more time to develop all these special things. I think about four years and then we could uh, do the next step to size up at uh, perhaps uh, 100 kilowatt and 1 megawatt and even more and then um, I think it, it will be about uh, between 10 and 15 years. I, I think that at the beginning the costs are very low. I can do the first step with let me say half a million but then the next is increasing is increasing and then um, the uh, more people see that this technology is available and is possible the more com uh, companies want to uh, join this group yeah. and at the end they all want it and um, and this means that we have at the end we have a, a huge amount of money and a huge amount of engineers who all were, are working on this special effect so that the money, you, you, can't, you don't speak about any money, this is a, a huge amount it is at the end, but it is a huge market at the end as well yeah. because we are replacing one car after the other from the technology of today uh, uh, by, by this new technology. As Stephen Greer says, everyone's first to be second, but no one wants to be first. Yeah. And so this you have to find that. This is now the situation, that. who is the first? I don't yeah. know. And uh, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.